Let's look at an example. Um, in this problem here, we're given a vector valued function, and the first thing that we're asked to do is simply sketch the graph of the function. All right? um, so, one of the things that you might notice here is if we think of these again as like x and y, right? So, this is saying y equals x squared minus 1. So, that gives us a parabola, right? It's a parabola opening upward, intercepts at minus 1 and 1, vertex down here, and there we are. So that's our parabola, okay? Uh, now, I guess we should be a bit careful. Uh, we want to do this with t running from minus 2 to 2. So uh, if t is plus or minus 2, um, y is going to be 3. So really we should actually stop our graph there and, and there. Get rid of that part. Okay. All right. So there's the, uh, the graph for r of t. Now, what about, uh, what about u of t? So we want u is going to be this unit vector. Now, one thing you always want to be a bit um, you know, careful about, um, to have a unit vector, we need to be able to divide by the magnitude. Um, so we want to make sure that the vector we start with is never 0. Now, we can see that from the graph. It does not pass through the origin. Um, or looking at this, you can see that um, the only time the x component is 0 is when t is equal to 0, and putting t equal to 0 in the y component does not give you 0, so we're good to go. All right. Now, um, the unit vector u of t, remember to get a unit vector in the direction of a given vector, we multiply by 1 over the magnitude. And what is the magnitude for r of t? Well, it's the square root of well, t squared, and then t squared minus 1, all squared. And I guess we can, we can multiply this out if we, if we want. I'm, I'm not sure if we actually gain much from doing so. Um, not really. Um, if you multiply it out and simplify, you'll have t to the fourth minus t squared plus 1. Um, not sure if that's any better. Okay, whichever way you want to do it, um, you'll have that. So then substituting that into here, that gives you the unit vector. Um, now, what's that unit vector going to look like? So the thing is, uh, if you think about... You know, if we think about, you know, r of t, you know, so let's say remember that the graph is a set of all endpoints for these vectors, right? So this is, say, r of 2, right? Um, and this is uh, r, of, r of 1, right? Um, now, when, when t is equal to 1, actually, we have... Uh, 1, 0, we have something that already is a unit vector, right? Um, so this r of 1 is actually equal to u of 1, right? And, and similarly, we have the same thing for, for minus 1. Um, and down here is r of 0, which would be equal to u of, of 0. But up here, you know, if you think about where is, where is going to be u of 2, well, u of 2 is going to be 1 over, so if I put t equal to 2 into this thing, um, I guess we can do it here, 16 minus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. We do it here, 4 squared plus, um, that's going to be 9, right? So 4, yeah, so 2 squared is 4, plus 9, 13. So 1 over square root of 13 times that vector, which is going to be 
two, three. Okay. Um, so that's actually got to be kind of here. All right. U of two. All right. And then and then similarly, u of minus two. Well, that's going to be r of minus two. And then u of minus two is in the same direction, but it's going to be a unit vector, so unit length. It's going to look like this. There's u of minus two. And now if we think about, well, what is the graph going to be? Uh, well, the graph is going to begin here. It's going to end there. And all the points on that graph, they have to lie in a circle, a circle of radius 1. Why? Because u is a unit vector. The magnitude is 1 all the way around, right? So all the points have to be a distance of 1 from the origin. And so you get a graph there. It looks something like this. Um, through there. Should pass through there. Okay? So you get a bit of a circle like so. Okay. So that's the first part of the question, is to sketch those two graphs. Um, now the second part says find u prime. Okay, So from here, and using the product rule property that we um, saw in the previous video, right? uh, you know that u prime will be the, the derivative of 1 over the magnitude of r. times r plus 1 over the magnitude of r okay times r prime right we have a product rule so we got to we got to work out some derivatives now some of them are easy and some of them are a little bit harder r prime of t is the easy derivative Derivative of t is 1. Derivative of t squared is 2t. Okay. All right. Um, and actually, for the, for the magnitude of, of r, um, well, you almost wanna, you want to, you feel like you should be able to get away with like some kind of chain rule thing here. Um, it doesn't, doesn't quite work out. Like you'd like to make a... Do, doesn't work, but um, we can we can kind of get there. We can say okay, well, so here's the magnitude of of r, right? So so one over so basically our function is this. We're looking at a function f of t, which is um, t to the four minus t squared plus one to the minus one half. So the derivative, f prime minus 1 half t to the 4 minus t squared plus 1 to the minus 3 halves times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 4t cubed minus 2t. Okay. Um, now you can, you can simplify that a little bit, and I'll, I'll put it here. Um, f prime of t. Uh, this um, term here raised to the power of 3 halves, right? Well, that's the cube of this, and this is just 1 over the magnitude, right? So this is 1 over the magnitude cubed. So what we have is minus, so we're going to put this 4t cubed minus 2t on top, and I'm just going to write it like this, over the magnitude 2 times the magnitude of r of t cubed. Now we could plug in what that is if we want, but for now we could, we could put it like that, okay? Just to save ourselves some writing. So putting this together, u prime is going to be minus 4t cubed minus 2t over 2 times the magnitude of r cubed times, uh, oh, where is it? Here, 1 
sorry, no, it's R of T, right? That's F prime, F prime times R. So it is T squared, sorry, T, forgetting where we are, T and then T squared minus one. All right, and then we can do F of T, one over in the magnitude of R times R prime, and that's where we get the one and the two T. Okay, so now we can evaluate at various points, right? Um, so what we might do is we can calculate the magnitude of R at each of these values. So let's just kind of gather that data up over here. All uh, right, so R, R at minus two is gonna be minus two, three. So the magnitude of R at minus two is root 13. R at minus one is going to be um, minus one, zero. So the magnitude of R at minus one is one. And R at zero is zero, negative one. And so the magnitude of R at zero is also one. Okay, so we can come over here and say, okay, so u prime at minus two. It's gonna be, and we gotta, you know, we gotta plug the minus two into here, which is a, I guess, slightly annoying. Uh, minus eight times four, so minus 32 plus four, we have minus 28 over two, so I'm gonna simplify that to minus 14 over, um, it'll be square root of 13 cubed times minus two, three, plus one over the square root of 13 times one and negative four. Okay, well that's not a super nice vector, is it? It's kind of ugly, to be honest. Um, and we could try to combine terms here and work out magnitudes. Um, I don't know if I even want to try plotting that one without the aid of the computer. It is plotted in the textbook. Um, I think I need a calculator to kind of sort out the values here, right? So um, maybe I won't bother to sketch that one. <laughs> we can check in the book. Uh, at minus one, well there the magnitude is one, so that's a little bit better. Um, let me see, so u prime at minus one, let's see if that works out a little bit nicer. Um, this is gonna be minus four plus two. So that's just minus two, oh, minus two over minus minus two becomes plus over two, that's just a one. Okay, so now the coefficient is just one, I like that better. <laughs> So it's going to be, this vector is going to be minus one, zero, plus, and again, that's gonna be a one, and then this is going to be one and negative two. So we get zero, negative two for u prime of minus one. And so that looks something like that. And so we can see that, you know, because we're tracing that curve out this way, this is the direction of travel. That is the, that tangent vector, that velocity vector, right? We can see it's tangent to the curve. It's going in the right direction. Um, oh, and you know, with that in mind, I guess even though I can't calculate, you know, these values very well, I can kind of get an idea of what it would look like, right? Because I know it has to be tangent to the curve. Uh, the only thing that, we're maybe not entirely clear on would be the magnitude of this thing. Um, that's that's going to be a bit messy, right? Because we got all those terms in there, but you know, that's life. Okay, finally, what about u of zero? This is getting long. This this example is longer than I thought it was going to be. Um, u prime at zero. This term is going to vanish, right? Because this is going to be zero. Um, so this is going to be one. It's going to be, oh, it's just one zero. So it's here. 
That also makes sense, right? Um, it's in the direction of travel, tangent to the curve. Okay, so that works out. First one, yeah, that's ugly. Um, that one, not so bad. Um, one thing that maybe is worth noticing here, um, notice that the derivative of u prime, so u is a unit vector. That doesn't mean that the derivative is going to be a unit vector, right? We can see that here. This is certainly not a unit vector. This is, this is not a unit vector. Um, and, and so we can see that the magnitude of the derivative actually changes as we go around. One way to think about what that means is that you're traveling at different speeds at different points along that curve. You're going faster at the beginning than you are here. Um, I suspect if we were to work through the details, uh, you go fast here, slow down, slow down, and then you start speeding up again until you come around to the other side.